I'm out of play it. Thank you. Like a bridge over trouble water. I'll lay me, lay me down like a bridge over trouble water. I'm gonna ease your mind just like a bridge over trouble. Water. Take me to the five. Oh, and like a good neighbor, Jesus is there. Yes. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing can stop us. I was reading in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and, you know, I, there's been a lot on my heart, a lot on my mind concerning the uh, just affairs of today, our nation, our world. You know, one thing about me, and I'll, I'll get into this a little later in the message too, I really dislike election years. I don't like election time. I don't like election years. And I'll explain why later. But, there's, you know, it, it, it brought me back to this, though. 1 Thessalonians 5.12. This is a very familiar scripture. I believe in King James it tells us to know them that labor among you. But we read it in another translation. In the NLT, it says, dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Now, that still means know them that labor among you. Honor them. There is a humbling that must take place. There is, there is respect that must be given in order to know or honor someone in that manner. There must be time spent. There must be, again, a humbling that takes place. Let's keep going. I'm going to read all the way to 22. Verse 13, show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peaceably, peacefully, excuse me, with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid, take tender care of those who are weak, be patient with everyone, see that no one pays back evil for evil. But always try to do good to each other and to all people. Verse 16, always be joyful. 17, never stop praying. 18, be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Now let's go back and break some of these down. Verse 12, know them that labor among you. Honor them that do the Lord's work because they work hard and give you spiritual guidance. There's nothing sneaky about this, okay? There's nothing sneaky about knowing them that labor among you. You know, you, it may sound like, oh, I need to get to know everything about them. They're laboring among me. I need, to meet, I need to get to know everything about them. I need to look them up on Facebook. I need to run. You know, some, some people have those little paid subscriptions where they can run and um, get your number reversed, find your address, find all kind of stuff, find out where you went to high school, where you went to elementary school, find out if you played on the playground, if you walked to school, if you took the bus, if your parents dropped you off, if you did school lunch, did you bring your own lunch? I don't know how, but they find all this out. It's not talking about that. Again, it's a respect. It's a humbling. It's an honor in getting to know someone. The Bible says in another passage, if you want friends, show yourself friendly. So there's nothing sneaky about this. It's honor. It's truly showing kindness and respect to them, to understand them, to get to know them. When you really want to know someone, you're showing them respect and you're saying, I'm taking the time to really get to know what it is that you like, what it is that makes you tick. Um, 
so that we can understand our strengths, where we may be weak at. You might be weak in an area where I know that, so I can strengthen you in that area and vice versa. But you'll never know that if you don't take the time to respect one another, humbly approach one another, and honor each other's time. And, and you're important to me, and I want to be important to you. And let's honor each other in that way, and we'll know one another. I'm tired of hearing people say, you know, there's, I don't know this person. I don't know that person. You've been, in, you've been to church with me 10 plus years and you don't know me? <laughs> so let's, let's go. Verse 13, show them great respect. Once again, well, we've said that. Let's go to 14. Um, brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Now, see, you can't go just talking people off the rip. You're lazy. If you don't know them, there's no relationship there. They're not going to listen to you. You're going to turn them off. You just come right, come right at them. You know, it's like, it's like ripping off a, a scab off somebody. You know, that's not, that's not the approach. That you don't want to be abrasive. So after you see, that's why 14 comes after 12 and 13. 12 and 13 already told us, look, get to know them. Honor them. Be respectful. Then it says, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. You got all kinds of people around you. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. There are going to be some different kinds of people around you. People who don't have the same core value system as you. People who did not come up with the same experience as you. You came up in church under holiness, under kingdom teaching. There's some people that didn't get that. So they're coming in, and I, as I say it a lot of times, an entry level. The thing is, when they come in on an entry level, they ought to have some brothers and some sisters around them that can help grow them in the knowledge of holiness and kingdom and keep them accountable and do it in a non-abrasive way. I think the only people that should get abrasive is that them siblings we done grew up with together. Because we got skin in the game, we got years in the game, and you know better. So I'm going to be abrasive with you. But see, we know that. That relationship is there. I'm trying to help us out because, listen, we're going places. And, and the places that we're going have been predestined by God the Father and nothing can stop us. And I just want to help us on our way. Can we keep moving? Verse 15. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. That's, that's just good right there. That's, that's self-explanatory. 16. Always be joyful. Now, I know that might be tough, but if the joy of the Lord is your strength, Amen. what's tough about that? Joyful. Happy and joyful are two different things. They're spelled differently. <laughs> They're two different things. Happy, you know, ha joyful. I would, go, I would go as far as to say joyful is deeper than happiness. Joy is a lot deeper than happy. You know, um, McDonald's has a happy meal. You know, when you when you're a little, you could be having a bad day, and that happy meal, <laughs> that happy meal, just instantly makes you happy. It's a it's a change in your mood. You know, so me, I, my parents would tell you, I see those golden arches, and I mean, I would just light up arches, arches, let's go. That was me telling them like, turn the car in that direction, okay. <laughs> Arches. I didn't care what was in their wallets, their, their purses. I didn't care what bills would do. I want arches. You did this to me. You took me to this play. I want arches. <laughs> All right? But joyful, I mean, joyful is like, look, man, I'm still waiting on this. I'm still waiting on this to happen. I'm, you know, this person at my job acting crazy. But look. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice. I'm going to find the reason. And, and there is a reason. You don't have to look hard. You don't have to look hard. Man, I'm breathing. I woke up. 
I remember last year or two years ago or whatever, I went through this illness in my body, but I thank God that I'm here to tell the story. I thank God I got another day to press toward these goals. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just in a good mood, man. You know, that joyful, it's, it's a mentality. I, I got strength. I got strength that even if something crazy happens today, you know what? I'm not going to lose my cool. Why? Because I know that God is able to take me through it. You know, God's going to be there with me through it. Whatever it is, I got to face. So I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I got joy. I got strength. All right. Now, here's the problem right here. This next verse. This, this is 17. Never stop praying. A lot of people get things that they want. They get things they want. Get a man. Get a woman. Get a house. Get a car. Get some clothes. And stop praying. And stop praying. You know, you... You, you were praying for something to happen or for something, and that's the problem. We got to stop praying for things. You got you, you to gotta, you gotta understand the, the scriptures tell us all these other things will be added. We're supposed to be seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the other things will be added. And so, see, that's the problem. So sometimes people are praying for things, and those things come, and they stop praying. They stop praying. They feel like, I, I got all I need. I got two houses. One's rental property. I got multiple cars. I ain't, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And, and just stop praying and get comfortable. And just stop praying. Prayer is our communication. It should be our daily communication with God. And if you are good, then do you have anyone else that you can pray for? Do you have something else, um, that someone that you're connected to? See, relationship. Do you have people that you're connected to, that you're believing God for them, for God to make a way in their life? Never stop praying. 18, we know this one. We say this one a lot. Be thankful in all, in all circumstances, in all things. Give them thanks, for this is the will of God. We say that. We say that. And that's good. And that's self-explanatory. 19. I'm going to park here for a second. It says, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. You know, some of y'all stifle the Holy Spirit. Some of you don't even have the Holy Ghost. And don't want him. You act like you don't even want him. Now, I know y'all laughing, but I am dead serious. You know what I want? You know, and I thank God for the brothers that were able. I, I had a limit. I only could have, um, besides me and Al was here, I only could invite like 10 guys to come play golf, right, at uh, Top Golf. And so I said, well, I'm going to try to, I'm going to let y'all know my reasoning. I said, I'm going to try to reach out to some brothers that are under 50, right, 30, between 30 and 50, that, um, that I know really just need this fellowship tonight. So I'm going to reach out to them. And that 10 filled up quick. And I was just, you know, they didn't know. I was just kind of looking around at them, all of them, uh, different professions, different walks of life, but came together you know, to celebrate my life. And I was so grateful for that. But I was also seeing so much further than that evening. I was looking at them and I was, I was seeing wealth. I was seeing health and prosperity on their lives. And I was seeing... Ten years down the line, these brothers being very influential um, in their lives, in their families, impacting their families, impacting ministry. Um, I said, man, there's probably, there's probably an elder in here. There's probably, you know, I, I was looking beyond. What I, what I want to see is I want to see men with the Holy Ghost. What I want to see is men that take the lead in spiritual things, men that are not ashamed to stand up and talk for the Lord. We talk about so many things. Now, I want now I want to get into my point of why I don't like election time and election years. Why? Because it reminds me of how divided we are. It reminds me of how divided we are. No, Elder, we just different. No, there's a difference between different and divided. 
There's a difference between different and divided. Different, we're different colors. Yeah, we're different colors. We can't help that. God did that. Blame God. There used to be a song called Blame God. God did that. You don't like chicken. You don't like rice. You don't like, I don't know, cornbread. You don't like, you don't like couscous. <laughs> you don't like couscous. Uh, whatever. You know, you, you may like vegan lifestyle, whatever. That's your choice. That's cool. That makes us different. But divided? We, we have signs. We have flags. We have bumper stickers. We have t-shirts. We have hats. We have all kinds of things that do nothing but divide us, that remind each and every one of us, you're not me. You don't believe like me. And so right now, I don't like you. I heard a pastor tell his congregation that if you are Democrat, get out. I heard a pastor say that. If you are in this church and you voting Democrat, get out. Get out. Now, I, let me tell you, I don't like that. And I wouldn't like if a pastor got up and said, if you voting Republican, get out. Because why are we bringing that in the house of the Lord anyway? What are we doing talking about this stuff? But see, this, these are distractions. These are distractions. These are distractions. And let me tell you what you need to do as sowers. Do I have any sowers in the room? As sowers, we are to continue cultivating what is right. We are to continue cultivating what is right. You know, I was looking for that word all this last week. We were talking about sowing. So that's the difference between a giver, someone like a one-time giver, and a sower. A sower is cultivating. That person is cultivating the land and that which they are connected to, that which they are married to, that which they are committed to. They're cultivating it, turning the soil. They're working the land. They're making observations. They're, ma they're putting down the right pesticides to keep the insects away from eating the crop. They're, they're putting up fences around to, uh, to, to protect the crop. They're, they're looking. They're, they're knowing the right time to plant. They're knowing the right time to water. They're knowing all this stuff because they're committed to the land. They're committed to what they have sown. They're watching over their investment. It's not just a one-time donation to St. Jude's Hospital, and I never give again. But I, I'm, I'm constantly continuing to cultivate, and that's why I don't like election time. It's, it's, it's this one time where it just seems like we're, we're sowing the wrong things. So many flags. I saw, I passed by a house that had Black Lives Matter, Juneteenth, black flag, and I, don't know, and I was like, they doing too much. Y'all doing too much. I was like, man, I mean, I get it. You happy about the holiday, but geez. I mean, it was like five flags. I stopped and I looked at it and I was, they doing too much. Y'all got the wrong idea, man. Y'all got the wrong idea. The, the, the Bible says, come all of you who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. It didn't say, I'll give you rest if you're Democrat. I give you rest if you're an AKA. I'll give you rest. If you're an Eastern star, I'll give you rest. If you're a Mason, I'll give you, I'll give you rest. If you're a Marine, no, it didn't, it didn't say any of those things. Jesus did not run. Jesus did not run for the presidency to make people follow him. <laughs> and Jesus is not American. Lord Jesus. See, the Holy Ghost is now reining me back in because Claude is beginning to talk too much. There are two verses in Deuteronomy 30. Two verses in Deuteronomy 30 that read, Today I'm giving you a choice between life and death. A choice. Verse 19 in, in the 30th chapter says, Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and cursings. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice 
you make. So God gives us choices. I don't want to harp on that for a long time. But you got to be careful. People are talking about, oh, this Roe versus Wade overturning. This is such a blessing for the saints. Is it? Do we want people, do we want to force people to live right? I believe if someone chooses to live right, chooses life, it's going to be more long lasting. Whether I, I got to force it down your throat, I got to beat it down on you. I don't, I don't, I don't understand uh, what's, what's happening. Actually, I do. But let me tell you, nothing's going to stop us. Who is us? The kingdom of God. Nothing's going to stop us. We are the seed and nothing can stop the seed of God. The enemy's plan all along, all through history, has been trying to stop the seed. He thought the seed was coming this way, so he caused this king to say, kill all the young men. He, he thought it was coming this way. You know, in the very beginning, he thought it was coming through um, Abel. So he was like, Cain, kill your brother. God always has a plan. He always had a plan. And so what we got to remember is that when we're with God, we're his seed and nothing can stop us. Nothing is going to stop us. Over in Genesis 11, you'll find the story of the Tower of Babel. They were in sin and focused. The Tower of Babel, they were in sin and they were focused. They were trying to build a tower up into the heavens so that they could overthrow God's kingdom. And nobody was distracting them. You ever notice when it comes to sin, nobody's really trying to distract people that are, that are, that are working in sin. Workers of iniquity don't have distractions. It doesn't know because they are the distraction. They are the distraction. And they, they don't. But as soon as you want to build for God, a million distractions are going to come your way. But you got to remember what I just told you, that because you are building for God, you have everything you need. You have provision and nothing is going to stop you. Just keep focused. Keep building. Keep focus, keep building. The Tower of Babel, they were on what we call demon time. There is a phrase today called demon time. Raise your hand if you know anything about demon time. Yeah, demon time is when you have made up in your mind to do wrong. And so that whole day, uh, you knew you was going to do wrong. That day, that time, you were on demon time. In your car, making your way over to go sleep with that person. You're on demon time. <laughs> that time you had made up in your mind, you was going to go cuss them out real good. That whole time, you was in your room. When you, even when you're getting dressed that day, demon time. In your mind, I'm going to cuss them out, and this is how I'm going to say it. <laughs> demon time. The people at the Tower of Babel were on demon time, y'all. But as soon as you make up your mind to give your time to God, here come the distractions. But again, don't worry about them. Stay focused. You have everything you do. Nehemiah, let me tell you, Nehemiah was a sower. That man sold his time and served King Artaxerxes. He was his cupbearer. And when the time was right after he had fasted and was praying to the Lord on what to do about my hometown, my hometown is in ruins. They've destroyed the gates, the walls. It's crazy back home. He went to the king. And he found favor with the king. And not only did the king grant him time to go back home and work in the hometown, but he sent him loaded. He gave him letters for all the kings of the different provinces that he had to cross through. And he had an order from that king uh, with money attached to it to get timber, for, to, to rebuild the gate and to build his house. People don't bring that out. People don't bring that out. It's in the scripture. Nehemiah was such a sower of his time. That's why sowers, you're never empty. Sowers, you're never, listen, you're not broke. You're not broke. Let me tell you something. Since I have just been sowing into the Lord, the Lord has saw fit that every week I'm just getting increased. I'm getting things added to me, to my life. And you know, a lot of times 
they happen and you just take it for granted. You just, but I, I stopped one day and I just said, man, the Lord has really just been blessing me um, in the form of money. Yes. In the form of opportunities, in the form of influence, God has been granting and increasing different things in my life because I'm choosing to just sow and just live a life of just sowing, 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 sowing and not worrying about the return because see, that's automatic. As long as the earth shall remain, there will be seed time and harvest and so when i'm giving when i'm sowing when i release i don't worry about it i know it's coming back in some form or fashion it's coming back to me and i and that's what keeps me going it's the fuel to allow me to continue to sow and so nehemiah lived that kind of life and when it was time for him to go back and rebuild the king gave him a letter and some money to get timber to not only rebuild the walls, but to build his house while he was there. Build a house. Do you know he asked for that? He said, could you also write up something where I can get some timber from this particular province? Um, I'm going to get timber from him to rebuild, and I need it for, for my house. It only took him, what, 52 days? But I need a house, though. I need some place to live them days. Because I, I know I'm going to have some distractions, Sam Ballot. Tobias. And let me tell you something. Those of you, I know you don't study your Bible this way and dig deep, but Sam Ballot was a Horonite. A Horonite, that's, that's Israelite uh, territory. And so uh, Nehemiah was an Israelite. Sam Ballot, even though he was from Samaria, he was actually, you just got to dig deep. He, he was an official in Samaria because in one, in one particular scripture, he was picking at Nehemiah in to the to the army to the to the officers in the army of Samaria which meant he had some high rank with them he had authority but also knowing where he comes from a horror night it, 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 it be your own people it be your own people he was an Israelite giving another Israelite a hard time one Israelite Nehemiah he's coming he's on good time he's on God's time Sam Ballard just wanted to choose demon time. He wanted, he woke up and, and chose violence. He moved, you know, in your phone, you got these little buttons you can move over. Sam Ballard, Sam Ballard said, he woke up that day and said, uh, um, joyfulness, gratefulness, violence. He cut the violence on. He cut the violence. And, and so he come, and you got to understand that when you are doing a work for the Lord, sometimes distractions will come from the inside. Sometimes distractions will come from people that you thought were so close to you, that you thought were kinfolk. People that you thought, okay, I know they're going to help me out because they're an Israelite too. Um, you know, they, they, they know the way. I, I, I fellowship with them before. We, we're good. We're good. But you have to stay focused when you are building for the Lord. You cannot let these things slow you down. You can't let what people are thinking in their mind concerning Roe versus Wade. You can't let people, whatever they think, however they want to vote. You can't let none of that come into what you're doing we're bigger than that we're more God is more important than that we are his people we are his people before any of that other stuff and you I'm telling you you got to be careful this ain't see this ain't one of the messages where I'm gonna have all that gravy laid all over the meal and all of that no 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 look take a look at the things that that, that easily divide us uh-huh we drive this. See, it's not just it's not just AKA Delta, True. Omega, Alpha. What's what's some of the other ones? Y'all know Sigma, Theta. You know, all those Mason, Eastern Star. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. All those things. Even down to where you work. You know, there are, there, are some, there are some people that are part of groups and things, and they keep secrets. And, and, and they'll look out for people who are in the group before they, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, I'm, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. They will look out for, they will look out, and we, we supposed to go to church together, we supposed to fellowship together. And you mean to tell me because I didn't enlist, you're not going to tell me about, 
But here's the thing about here's the thing about a sower. It don't matter if you tell me about it or not. Somehow, somehow, God makes a way for me to know. During the process when Nehemiah was building, there were things that he was not privy to, but God fixed it to where other people found out and brought it to him. When you're sowing, when you're, when you're concentrated on God's mission, when you are committed to God's work, God finds a way to get you in the room. God finds a way to make you in the know. God will always work things out out for you because remember Romans 8 28 all things all things oh there's the gravy all things are working all things are working you gotta believe it don't just quote it don't just tweet it don't just put it on your refrigerator. Don't just wear it on your shirt, but walk in it. All things are working together for the good of those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. You got to know that what you're doing, I've been called to it and I'm doing a good work and I cannot come down. I cannot come down. I ain't got time to argue with you about Roe versus Wade. I can't come down. I'm doing a good work. I ain't got time to argue with you about how many guns you got. I'm doing a good work and I can't come down. One thing I want you to know is I love you with the love of the Lord. And if you love the Lord, and you love me, and I love you, let's get this work done. Let's get it done. We come from all different kinds of walks of life. Despite our groups and activities that we're in outside of the church, be careful of those, y'all. Rethink some of those. I'm not your boss. I'm not here to boss your life. You're grown. You're grown. But what I do know is that I have been called to help grow you in kingdom living. I do know that. And so if you would listen to God speak through me, we're going to do some things for your family, for your children, and for your children's children, and for their children. What we are doing, and I'm getting ready to close, it's almost 10 o'clock. What we are doing, because we got to do communion, what we are doing at New Life Ministries, it's, it's yes, it's going to be for us, but there are so many of us that are here that I remember from 8th Avenue and some from Old Savannah Road that saw all the different places, all the different stages, and when we got to Morgan Road, we, we went into that and began to have service there in 1999. And it's been a long time, right? That's been, that's been 23 years, right? That's been 23 years in that building. And now we have the steel on the land. And let me tell you, distractions are happening. They're trying to give us delay after delay after delay. But here's the thing about, remember, always be joyful. See, when things like that happen and I hear those new, the news about the delays and stuff, I say, well, you know what? It looks like God is going to somehow discount. Uh, He's going to take some money off of what we're going to have to do when we start building. I, I just see, I see the goodness in everything. If it's a delay, okay, if we started building now, uh, we're not going to get this deal, this discount that's going to happen for us. It's going to happen at the time when we start. I see you, God. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. I mean, we still got a building to have church in at South. We still got a building to have church in at West. We still got the steel on the land. And you know what? If, if it be your will, God, we'll switch contractors. We'll, we'll, John and Nick ain't got to be it. But Lord, right now, we're calling their names for you. We're calling their names to you. It's going to benefit them if they get a chance to be a part of this project because this project is something that 
that's going to change the community. It's going to change the city. It's going to change the region. I find the joy in it. I find the joy. I don't get down. I don't. Whee! Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. And, and let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost, I don't know what, what God has done for you, what he's brought you out of. Um, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus, when I think, when I remember how I used to be, when I think about where God brought me from, I can't sit still. So you might just have to laugh at me because I dance. You might have to laugh at me because I speak in tongues. But that's my reason. That's my experience. You don't know the ugly stuff he got me out of. And when I think of his goodness. When I think of his goodness. Hands go up. When I think of his goodness. Feet get light. When I think of his goodness, I'm sorry. Mm. I make no apology for how I praise the Lord. I took, I took Psalm 150 serious. It said, let everything, let everything that had breath. It said on the high sounding cymbals, on the organs. It said in the song, in the dance. I took that literally. Amen. We're standing.